Good morning. Would you please rise if you are able to hear the gospel this morning? This reading is from the book of Luke 9, verses 18 through 27. And it's just one of the many times Jesus took his disciples and went out into the woods so he could pray. But this is the first time he tells them of his coming demise. Peter says Jesus is the Messiah. Once when Jesus was praying in private and his disciples were with him, he asked them, who do the crowds say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others that one of the prophets of long ago has come back to life. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Peter answered, the Christ of God. Jesus predicts his death the first time. Jesus strictly warned them not to tell this to anyone. And he said, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law. And he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Then he said to them all, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit his very self? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. I tell you the truth, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. So that ends the reading for today. We have a visitor that will be joining us in just a moment uh, to help us with that particular passage. Before I do that, I want to take this time in this section of the service to correct something that I said a couple weeks ago uh, when I was sharing about our church and state thing. I had used a, a source, an email that had passed on to me about the National Day of Prayer, and it came from somebody I know, and it had some misinformation. So I want to share you, I want to correct the misinformation that I gave you on a couple of weeks ago so that you'll know that what we do here is to share truth and you can trust everything we say. So I want to be sure to tell you that uh, what I said was that President Obama had uh, canceled the National Day of Prayer in 2009 and he didn't actually do that. What he did do was not continue a practice of gathering at the White House that his predecessor had done for eight years. So he didn't do that in 2009, and he was under no obligation to do that. His predecessor did it for eight years, and he just didn't continue that practice. So uh, I said he canceled it. He didn't cancel the National Day of Prayer. He just didn't continue the practice of gathering at the White House with prayer in 2009. Not obligated to do it, just didn't continue that. And uh, President Obama uh, did not attend that we know of. In September, there was a gathering of uh, Muslims in, the, in Washington, D.C., and it was on the Capitol steps, not in the White House. The information I had said that he met with a group of uh, Muslims for the Islamic Day of Unity in the White House. And there was a gathering for National Day of Unity for Islam, but it happened on the Capitol steps, not in the White House. President Obama did not organize it, and to the present state of our knowledge, did not attend it. That wasn't in the information that I used to check this. So I just want to clarify that, that as a, no disrespect to the office of president, but as I shared some disappointments with, uh, with him about some actions and some words that he shared, that uh, I just want to clarify some of those things so that you know that you can trust what we say here and that we will be all about truth. So, there you have it. So, but let's move on. 
we have a guest with us that Simon of Cyrene, and I'm going to put on what I call the uh, Palestinian, all generic, all-purpose Palestinian headdress. And Simon of Cyrene probably didn't wear one of these, but it's just my way of getting into character as we welcome Simon of Cyrene. This particular headdress was uh, Mary Alice Schrode's, so I consider it a privilege to use it. Sorry about that. I want to share with you the experience I had of carrying the cross of whom I've come to know as my Savior and my Lord. At the time, I was a, a Judas, um, not a Judas, but one from Judaism, living in the regions of Cyrene. You would recognize that today as portions of the country of Libya, over there by Egypt. As I often did, as often as we could in our family, to come to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. And as we often did, we would enjoy seeing the crowds and worshiping in the temple and often hearing the, the teachers teach and the great rabbi share with us about our faith. It was on that time, that particular Passover, that I believe in your day you call it Easter as you worship together. It was on that week that it was different. Now, I had heard even over in Cyrene as merchants coming back and talking about this, this one over in Israel now, this, this new teacher that spoke with authority. They, some of them had even seen him perform miracles. Some had even seen him say things that like no one had ever spoken before. He spoke with an authority, not as the scribes and the, the Pharisees, but as one who is speaking even from the foundation of creation itself. An amazing man. We heard these great stories, and so we were kind of eager to hear him, and I did get to see him afar during that week as he taught in the temple. I didn't get close until that day when as I was coming in for the, from the country to worship again and enjoy the festivities, the crowd seemed to be all going my way. It seemed like I was headed in the wrong direction as everybody was shouting and gathering together along the streets and going the other way. And I tried to get off to the side and then right in front of me, this man fell carrying his beam, carrying his cross on the way out to be executed. And he had been horribly tortured and he was in his weakened state had stumbled under the weight of this cross. And I, I stood transfixed. It was not a pretty sight. And there were a couple other gentlemen behind him that were coming as well. And before I knew it, a Roman soldier was grabbing me and forcing me over and ordering me to pick up the cross. It was not an easy thing to do. It was heavy. But just a whole experience. And I've come, come to understand in years since how really a privilege it was to share in that experience. It wasn't easy. It wasn't something that I would ever have desired to do for the beam of the cross had his blood on it already. And that blood went on me. And as I've come to understand him and grow in my faith and realize what was going on, I realized that that blood that was shed for the salvation of the whole world was also the blood that was cleansing me from sin. I carried the cross, and I, I could see that he was fully engaged, fully embracing the experience. He was going to go all the way in his suffering on the cross. My helping him with the cross it relieved him of part of the burden, but he was fully in the experience. I don't quite know how to say it other than all of himself was pointing towards the crucifixion that was to come. There wasn't anything that he wasn't suffering. 
but I carried that cross out there for him, and I, I watched then as it continued. And in that time and in that moment, I, I knew that something more was going on than just the, the killing execution of a common criminal. I've since come to know him as truly the Messiah. As Isaiah prophesied that surely he would bear our burdens, he would bear our sins and our transgressions. For all of our iniquities, he would be killed and pierced. And by his wounds, we would be healed. I began to know later as the Holy Spirit worked with me and as I began to listen to the teaching of the disciples that this Jesus, this one whose cross I had helped carry was my Savior and my Lord. The cross has always carried a special place in my life since I had that experience. And when Jesus spoke things that we remembered how we had to pick up our cross daily and follow him, it carried new meaning for me. And I'm so thankful that the Heavenly Father allowed me to carry his cross, to help Jesus with his burden. Because it made me realize how important you all are and how my early gatherings in the early church were to me because even Jesus needed help carrying his cross. So when Jesus tells us that we have to pick up our cross and follow him, it's as if we know that even as we are fully engaged and fully in the experience of bearing our cross, that there is help, that there is one and those others who will help us in our hour of need. What does it mean to, to carry a cross? Well, he says, you, you must deny yourself and pick up your cross and follow me. To deny oneself is not the same as self-denial. Self-denial is where you give up things, uh, kind of duty-bound. You may be in the season of Lent or thinking, well, what am I going to give up or what am I going to do? And there's a sense of, oh, here we go. Here's, here's what I got to do. Here's my cross to bear. I guess I better read another chapter of the Bible or I better give up something or whatever it is. And those may be all good things. And they may be something that the Spirit is asking you to do but is it something that's like, oh, you know, I'm a Christian, so that means I've got to do some of these things, and okay, here we go. I guess I'll do them because, you know, it's the right thing to do. And people talk about the cross as something like that, a, a frustration or an annoyance that we put up with that we have to do because we're a follower of Jesus. But a cross is really something different than that. A cross is something that causes us to know our need for Jesus. A cross is something that does break us. A cross is something that does cause us to fall on our knees before God. A cross is something that is more than we can just handle as we tackle whatever it is or walk under that burden. It can be, it's different for us to think in this way, but it could be a couple things. It could be, as we deny ourselves, that we're realizing that we can't do this on our own. There are some things in life that we can't do on our own strength. Uh, you may have it in your culture. There was around in mine at the time, but your pastor has shared with me that as we've had a chance to speak, that you have a saying, uh, God only gives you what you can handle, or God never gives you more than you can handle. And really, that's not true. As I watched Jesus on that road to Calvary, Calvary, clearly there was a burden that he could not bear, and he needed help. Now, 
Nobody else could die for the sins of the world, don't get me wrong. Nobody else could carry that burden. That was Christ alone to do. Only he was able in a sinless life to bear the sins of the whole world. But in that experience of the, the wooden cross and the cross of saving all of humanity, there was a sense in which I stepped in to help him bear the burden of the cross so that he could go to it for the sake of the whole world. The cross is something that lets us know we cannot go the road alone. So whatever it is in your situation, there could be things, situations of life that you find yourself that are more than you can handle and you need help. It's often hard for us to ask it. One, your pastor shared with me a story of how when they had adopted a little girl, their daughter Lisa, five months old, she came to them with bilateral ear infection. This means she had ear infection in both ears and the doctors missed it and she cried all the time. And there wasn't any more than a 45 minute span of time where she wasn't awake. Never slept more than 45 minutes at a time, day or night for five to six months. And in the middle of that time, they were exhausted and sitting in their home wondering, did we make a mistake? Are we up to this task? We are exhausted. And someone came to the door, members of the church came to the door, unannounced, four o'clock in the afternoon, with a pizza and said, we're taking the kids. And took both Scott and Lisa, the two children they had at the time, and didn't come back till 10.30 at night. And in that time, Pastor Bob shared with me that he and his wife, Susan, just were able to take a break. They did little things that they had left undone because of the exhaustion of caring for this child. There are many in situations that last longer than five or six months that are caregivers that need the the strength of the community and the help of the community, of friends who come alongside and help them bear that cross and that burden. It could be a character flaw. It could be those kinds of things where the Lord has made us in such a way and our life experiences have taken us down a, a way where we have character issues. And there always seems to be that one character challenge that we just seem to be powerless against. And you can even take this to addictions where we know we have to admit our, our powerlessness against it. We don't go that road alone. It's a cross that we bear. Sometimes we bear it all of our life, but in victory as we struggle, as others come along and help us with those burdens. A cross to bear could be a ministry that God is calling you to do and you know it's bigger than you and you're hesitant to do it. A cross is something that causes you to recognize your need for Jesus. We need him for our salvation. We needed him to go to the cross to die for our sin. And in our life circumstance, God may even be calling us to pick up a ministry, to pick up a, something, a calling of his and we know that we won't be able to do it unless we're fully invested and he helps us do it. But it is voluntary. Picking up the, I didn't have a choice. I guess I did. I, I suppose if I had not taken up Jesus' cross, the soldiers would have put it on me or killed me or flogged me. And in that moment, I, I just did it, and I, I picked it up and took it. But you don't have to. You can be a, a believer in Jesus and not take up the cross, whatever it is that God is calling you to do or whatever your life circumstance is. You can go it alone, but it'll break you. But you can ask for help. You can ask for God's healing. You can ask for God's strength. And you can ask your community for strength and courage as you go and walk that road. But it's voluntary. 
But I suggest that whatever it is, you do it because it'll be God's will for you and it'll, God will be with you in the middle of it. And even in those times where it seems like a defeat like the cross did on that day, God will make something huge out of it. God will make something valuable and worthwhile out of it. And like in my day, we talk about logs floating in the sea. You push them down and they pop back up to the surface. If you try to move along like you don't have a cross to bear, it'll keep coming up. Your pastor said it was more like a, having a, trying to hold a beach ball down under the water. It takes energy and it takes strength to do it and you can hold things under the surface and pretend like they're not there but they keep wanting to pop up. So in this season of Lent, as we go through the journey of Jesus to the cross, ask the Lord, is there a cross that I need to bear? Or if you already know what that is, ask the Lord for help. Ask the Lord for strength. And it might also be that in your asking for help and strength in bearing the cross that somebody else needs to come along with you and bear it with you. Don't try to do it on your own strength. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray together. Lord, help us as we seek to honor you in our failings and our shortcomings. Guide us. And Lord, reveal to us anything that we need to tackle. Reveal to us your source of love and strength as we shoulder our crosses. And Lord, even as you did with Jesus, bring forth a victory for us in the shouldering and the carrying of our crosses. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for being in the midst of life with us to bear our burdens, even as we bear one another's burdens. Give us strength, give us courage, give us healing, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Would you please stand for the closing prayer? <clears throat> Lord, thank you for being with us every step of the way in life. May we trust you with our burdens. May we trust you with our life situations and who we are. Lord, thank you for showering us with your love. Thank you for proving to us with every step that you are trustworthy and faithful. You are the greatest. Guide us, we pray, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.